Hello, my name is Amos Tarfa and thank you for watching this video. I will be sharing briefly on the topic of love and its implications today. Um, I have a YouTube channel and you might be watching this on my YouTube channel so I want to encourage you to please feel free to subscribe and um, you know share this video with others who might be able to learn a thing or two. Uh, feel free to like it if you learn a thing or two as well. So this is just a video talking about the topic of love and let's give some context. It's 2020. Uh, there has been uh, a presidential election, there has been uh, a discussion of COVID-19 for most of the year, and of course the effects of it, and uh, some people have lost loved ones from uh, COVID-19, and, and sorry for your loss. This has been an, a very interesting year, and I know of course there's been other things that have happened, but I just, I'm giving you some context. So we have uh, COVID-19, we have the elections, we have uh, lo uh, some, some lockdowns that happened earlier on and stay at home orders. And some people are going through that right now, again, round two. And now we look at all of that context. And one of the things that I noticed that was a little troubling to me is that, especially in the, in the realm of social media, there were people who would uh, go online and maybe share their views about A, B, or C. And I would notice that sometimes the, the, the comments that followed or uh, the, the, would get intense. And that troubled me some because you have to recognize again, right? We've talked about the fact that the, uh, you, you, the difficult challenges that people have had are in place. And then sometimes they get bashed when they share some of their views online. And, you know, there's already things they might be struggling with, and then they're getting bashed. And I just don't think that it was necessarily the best expression of love when people start bashing people online. Uh, and so this is not, first, this is not a video to condemn you if you've done that. Because as the Bible has said in various parts, today is the day of salvation. There's, there's an opportunity for us to turn around and change our ways. And so please do not take this upon yourself and feel like, oh, I failed. I, I was mean to somebody online yesterday. Well, you can apologize. You can make things right. And you can move forward after learning where you might have gone wrong. And maybe you were the person who people put mean comments on your wall. Um, again, sorry, it's, 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 a, it's a tough era now where people can just put comments, people you might not even know, and sometimes those comments might not be put with the, the right um, sort of context or, or love, in, you know, would, would love if, if you know what I mean. So I say all of that to say this. So the topic of love has been very important to me. But also, as a side note, I really want to encourage people to recognize that there are many people having a difficult time. Again, people have lost, some people have lost their jobs and all of that. So when you comment on someone's wall on, or, or, or email someone or, or use social media, let's really be mindful of people's circumstance. Or maybe they don't have any of those situations. Still doesn't mean that we should be mean to them on, on, online. If you disagree with someone, there are ways you can have conversations with them. Again, remember back in the early 2000s or before we had a lot of uh, uh, Facebook and all of that, how did we handle disagreements, right? There, there were certain ways we could have handled it. it. Sometimes maybe it's best not to comment on someone's wall. Maybe it's not, not to comment on something rather than going out and then bashing them. These are just some things I want to encourage us with because of what, part of what's going on. And so now I come to the topic at hand, which is the topic of love. Uh, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, well, it's one of the most uh, uh, most, you know, preached on sermons at weddings, for example, the greatest gift, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming is one of the ones that is preached a lot because it talks about love and it reminds spouses of the importance of uh, loving one another. So we're not going to, uh, again, maybe, maybe it's no longer used as much, but, but I know that it's very common and it can be very common. So let's look at 1 Corinthians 13 and let's talk about love as far as loving our neighbors and loving one another, not necessarily love in the context of marriage, but love loving your neighbors. And uh, one of the most famous parables in the Bible is the parable of the Good Samaritan. If you haven't read that, Luke 10, 25 to uh, 37 talks about the parable of the Good Samaritan. It's an excellent um, introduction to seeing how we can love our neighbors. I also want to mention at this time, in light of all the news and all the things going on in the world, I really want to encourage us to consider making more time to spend in the Bible, in reading God's word, in understanding what, what the Bible has to say about the time, just about the times we're living or just about time in general, uh, the, the times to come, I would say, before Jesus returns. And so I want to encourage you to 
um, instead of listening to the news for four hours a day, to reduce your news intake and to increase your study of the Bible and to increase your reading of books that help and encourage and challenge you. Increase time with people, uh, whether it's through Zoom or, or where you see them in person. Increase those opportunities of interacting with people, of loving people. Don't allow the news and all that is going on in the world to overwhelm you. 1 Corinthians 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. It's just basically my life is full of noise. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. So that was 1 Corinthians 13, 4. My friends, we ought to love one another in real life, online, wherever we find ourselves. Even with people you disagree with, there is a way to still love and to show that love. Uh, and of course, when Christ has changed our hearts and done a work in our lives, that will show forth in how we love others. One of the things I've been telling people in the past few weeks and as I've observed is that in the history of humans, as far as recorded history, since the time of Cain and Abel, of course, we know it's after Adam and Eve, but let's go Cain and Abel. Let's, let's put a date on it. I would say it's, um, if I'm going with, uh, 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 maybe let me go with the time of Joseph, right? If I could give you more specifics there, a little before Joseph, a few years before Joseph. Let's go to 2000 BC, okay? Let me just use that time range. From 2000 BC, to 2020, okay, there has never been a civilization, there has never been any society where there has not been injustice, prejudice, problems, bigotry, all of that, okay? Not, I'm not saying this to support any of that, I'm just th to say that those things are okay. I'm saying it to say humans in every generation will have drama, will, will sometimes persecute or, or not love their neighbors. Those problems have existed literally since the, as far back as you want to go with humans, okay? Here's the thing though. In each of those generations, however, in each of those, there are people that will stand up for truth. There are people who will love their neighbors. There are people within that generation. But as a whole, society, every civilization has had tyranny of different sorts and problems one after the other. So that tells us that the human heart that is where the problem starts. You will meet people of every background that are kind, and you will meet people of every background that might not be kind, right? So we have to be careful in lumping people and calling people and generalizations and calling people this or calling people that. We really have to be careful with that. It is not grounded in truth, and we should pursue truth. So why am I saying this? Because as we're talking about love, that is what solves the challenges in each of those generations, in each of those civilizations, is when the love, and truly, of course, the love of God is flourishing through people's lives, then societies can flourish as they ought. So when we look at the implications of love, love can cover a multitude of wrongs. Love can, can, can make things right. And so we, we look at all these, again, civilizations, and we see what was the lacking ingredient. A lot of them, where there was no love, you have problems. You have people fighting within the same sort of um, a, a, a dynasty. You have brother fighting brother and sister fighting sister. This is something that has happened for a long time. Today, however, what are you doing and what am I doing to love my neighbor? Today, however, what am I doing to pour my life out as a sacrifice and, and in giving to others and supporting them as I can by the grace of God? These are things we should think about. And then also, today, what is the injustice happening today? Where are the challenges happening today? In every civilization, at every time, we know that some of these things happen, right? So then the question is, examine today. Look at today. Examine every facet of society. All the sad things with trafficking. All the sad things with, with people who are not given a chance to have life, or to live a life, all the, ch the, the opportunities um, and all the things that are denied to people, to deny to babies, deny to citizens of all kinds. We need to deal with injustice on every level. 
And if you are hurting, and if you are in a difficult spot, it is important that you recognize that there is a God who loves and who has given His Son to be a sacrifice for you and I so that we can be reconciled to Him. And He will meet us at the point of our need. I say this because I understand sometimes people explain, well, you don't know my situation. You don't know why I did this or why I did that. And that's why I say, let's bring our problems. Let's bring our challenges. Let's bring it all to the God who made the heavens and the earth. So... We need to look at our lives today. A hundred years from now, if the world is still here as it is, God willing, a hundred years from now, I wonder what they will say about our time period. What will they say about this time period and the injustices that happen? And will you be a part of the people who, who uh, in, this, in, in an act of trying to do right, were, were doing wrong and ultimately were causing injustice? Think about that and we'll talk about that more in a little bit. Verse 4 says, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Love does not rejoice in iniquity, in sin, in things that bring dishonor to the one who created the heavens and the earth. Love does not rejoice in that. True love. So you can see that you can have something that you think is love, but that isn't love. Love has to be grounded with truth, and it has to be grounded with righteousness. Because God is love. And if God is love, the Bible also tells us that God is just. And the Bible tells us that God is righteous. So if God is just and God is righteous, love must also be just and love must be righteous. So love rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Sometimes I find it interesting, some people can't endure, um, you know, just handling their neighbor, posting a, a comment about something that they might not necessarily agree with. That in and of itself, for some people, they can't even endure just that, just a comment, right? And so we, we have to be careful where we don't become impatient with one another. Let's see more about love. Love never fails, but whether they are prophecies, they will fail. Whether they are tongues, they will cease. Whether, but whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. When all is said and done by God's grace, when we meet Jesus face to face, we will see things clearly as they should be seen. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am also known, or just, yeah, just as I am also am known. And now abide faith, hope, and love. These three, okay? Faith, hope, and love. And now abide faith, hope, and love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. My friends, love is even more important than just knowing, right? It's, not, it's more, way more important than knowing. Knowledge has limits. Love goes a long way. We need love, my friends. We need to love our neighbors. We need to love in real life and we need to love online. We need to listen to one another. We need to make time for one another. You know, one of the things that is easier said, well, one of the things that's easier to do is to actually generalize, label, and shut down somebody's situation and put them off to the side. Yeah, this person belongs to A, B, and C. I'm not going to talk to them. You know, they don't, they, they, for whatever reason, we box people up and then we push them off to the side. And by the way, this is something people are guilty of, of all stripes. So I, I, I'm not saying that only people who are, for example, conservatives think this, or only people who are liberals think this. I'm saying all people do this. See, our hearts need to be transformed. They need to be changed in order to, for us to function as we were created to function. Not everything that I do, not everything that uh, I aspire to can be, can be called that which is right. That's why I need to examine it in light of the scriptures, in light of the Bible. Is this what God would have me do? And the same thing should be said uh, as we interact with one another. Are we looking at what the scripture calls us to? Or are we uh, doing things in our own strength and doing things without God's love in context? Remember Luke 10. That's the story of the Good Samaritan. 
um, I want to leave you with an assignment. Again, some people are going back into lockdown. Some people are getting stay-at-home orders. Some people are going to have more free time. Now, others might not. But I really want to encourage you to take the New Testament of the Bible, whether you start from Matthew or you start later on in John, and just read it all the way to the end. Over the next few months, that will keep worry away. That will keep anxiety down because you don't want... Um, you don't want all the things, the news and this and that and all of that to be bombarding you every day. Reduce your time with the news. Reduce your time with social media. Increase your time with taking in God's word and loving your neighbor, listening to one another, understanding that generalizations do not solve sometimes the individual's qu uh, issues that they're facing. If generalizations were the way to go, Jesus would not have talked to the woman at the well in John chapter 4. But he spoke with her. He, 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 did, he also uh, challenged the woman in John chapter 8. He spoke to that individual. We need to learn to treat people as individuals and stop generalizing and putting them into buckets and, and boxes of all sorts. This is something we all have to work on. And I'm just here to share some truth with you. So please... Um, if you've been encouraged by this and challenged by this, feel free again to subscribe. I'll be doing more videos as I'm able over the next few weeks. And I hope that you're blessed by this. And uh, please love your neighbor and have a blessed weekend.